My name is Maxine Barish Reedon. I'm 51 years old. Today is April 21st, 2008, in Sacramento, California. I'm here today with my best friend in the world, Elizabeth Bell. My name is Elizabeth Bell. I'm 70 years old. It's April 21st, 2008. We're in Sacramento, California, and I'm here with my best friend. So how did we begin this incredible, beautiful friendship process that we have? Well, we were in a women's group together, and um, I don't know as we were particularly close to one. I mean, you know, we were part of the group, and we enjoyed each other. And um, on your 40th birthday, we were celebrating, and you approached me with an invitation. And I guess I'd like to hear it from your perspective because I was approached and then I can tell you my response. So I remember feeling pretty overwhelmed with everything going on in my life, my family, my kids, my job. And I had the insight that I wanted to do something to create what was important to me in my life instead of reacting to things in my life. And with that thought, uh, the next day, a friend of mine gave me this prayer of intention that she said she had been doing with a friend of hers every morning to create the day. And it seemed like the perfect invitation for me. So I remember the next time we got together uh, in our women's group, it was my 40th birthday. And I saw you, and I knew you were the one. And I remember feeling chosen, like chosen for something that was going to be very special. Um, and I absolutely re resonated to setting every day an intention. I, I tend to be, as I think both of us are, goal-oriented. You know, if I've got something to that I set out, I usually accomplish it. And so it was a way of saying, we get to create the day together. And I felt chosen and honored. Um, like, wow, why me? But on one hand, on the other hand, well, of course me. It, it was great. Yeah, it just, it, it just happened like it was always meant to be. And we had this prayer. I don't even remember when we first got together, but we knew that we wanted to change it and to make it our own. So um, we got together and we started the process of creating a prayer that would be honoring of each other and of our day and of our intention together. And also, uh, with the intention of uh, creating a sense of gratitude and grace for each other to live into during the day. And I guess it would be a good time to mention that we did this and started this 12 years ago and have been doing it ever since um, on a, maybe not on an absolutely everyday basis, but clearly every day. Um, So, do you remember how serious we were in the beginning? <laughs> yes. Uh, sometimes we would uh, take a very long time to uh, set our prayer and intentions together. And uh, I think there were times when we both wondered if we could really sustain this because it, it, it did seem to take a long time. We, we created lots of imagery and lots of story and um, but it, it just seemed to gradually become refined down to speak to what was really essential and important to both of us and I never thought we'd be sitting here together 12 years later having made this phenomenal commitment together as you were talking I was reminded of a, of a um just a superb sauce 
you know, that you put on and you boil it down to the essentials. Because we really did start out always very intentional. It's like this was about being intentional. And so every word meant something to us. And the initial prayer was long. I don't think it took probably more than a minute to say, but every word was important. And what was beautiful was it evolved. Um, it evolved so that it changed as we changed and we grew. Mm -hmm. And it deepened. And so we would say a prayer. So the, the, the process was we would say a prayer, the, the kind of the written context setting, I guess, more than anything. Um, we'd start with that, and then we would say our intention, whatever that was for the day, to be joyful, to be creative, whatever it was. And then we would almost solidify that by giving each other an image. And as you said, some of those images <laughs> initially got to be uh, very long. I, I remember uh, one of them where the image was, I see you walking on the beach and the sun is starting to come up. And it didn't end until the sun <laughs> set. <laughs> so uh, we decided that we needed to streamline our images a little. Uh, and we've had amazing images over the 12 years uh, that we've created out of listening and witnessing the other. Yes, I think that's that's really important that that we each spoke what was in our hearts in that moment and the other was there to just listen and to witness and to, uh, to speak to uh, an image of feeling that arose from that. And I think what was magical is a lot of times we each have almost the same image for each other. It's like we're we're doing this um, dance together, and uh, and you know we, we become one really in the process. Um, I, I also wanted to say, in, in terms of the the image becoming so long, it's it's become a place where where we where we can really get playful with each mm -hmm. other. We go back to remember when we used to go on and on and on, and and it's. Because laughter has become a really, really important part of this as well. And uh, maybe just a, a, a time to mention that, that sometimes when we call each other in the morning, we're really struggling. One of us is feeling irritable or unhappy, and it just doesn't feel like we're going to be able to generate anything really positive that day. And we find that that's often a place where we can just laugh together and that is so healing it's been so important in my life like I can call you and say today I'm the possibility of being crabby and irritable and uh and <laughs> this is what I'm gonna do to make that happen and so the laughter and the joy allows me then to move out of that space that may not feel so good and into something that's uh that has creativity and joy instead you know, as I hear you speak to it, it's, I again am amazed at 12 years of daily contact. Some couples don't have that. <laughs> uh, daily intentional con contact, and we created that happening despite different schedules, despite um, not feeling well. There were many days when I might not have wanted to even talk to anybody. And yet, after getting on our phone call, setting an intention, being a creator of the day together, it shifted my whole mood, and it shifted how I was during the day. And there were days when I would set an intention, and I wouldn't remember it until the next day. So we went through all kinds of um, evolutions, I guess, uh, phases of this whole process. And the essence of the whole thing has been clearly friendship and clearly seeing each other's greatness and continuing to reflect that. I remember you sent me a card once that said a friend is 
a person who sings your song to you when you've forgotten it. Yeah. Yeah, it, it, it's been so amazing to me that what I think we both saw when we first started this process was that what we were creating was an intention that we wanted to bring about in that day. And really what we've created instead is the most amazing and intimate and connected friendship that I have ever had with another human being. I had no idea that that is really the gift that would have come out of all of this 12 years ago. Because there's nothing that I think I can speak for both of us that we would not say to each other. Um, nothing. There's parts of... All the parts of my soul's soul is revealed. Yes. Yeah. So let's it, say it that way. And I, and I, I think that's such a gift that we are able to have that with one another, knowing that there are many people uh, who feel alone and isolated in the world, and to say that you've had the opportunity to um, be truly seen by another human being for everything that you are and know that you are still accepted and loved is phenomenal. I often say I don't know what I did to deserve, to deserve this, but I'm extraordinarily grateful. And blessed. It, it's like somebody somewhere up there was looking out and said, ooh, these two need each other. <laughs> uh, <laughs> to, need each other to uh, love, to laugh, to grow, um, and to bear witness, to truly bear witness to each other as unique human beings and as friends. It, it, to me, it's a huge testament to friendship. And recently, um, you created that in a very special way for me because it's it's friendship without asking it's like friendship knowing knowing the other person so completely that knowing what it is that's needed when it's needed and not having to wonder about it or ask and um, your just generous, automatic, without question, being with me when my father died a couple weeks ago was beyond words, a huge gift. And knowing that that would, that that's just where you needed to be, both for you and for me. Yeah, and, and I think that's been part of this creative process that we have generated also is is knowing that when we can really step into the intention that we have in our heart that things happen so when I got the call from you that that your father had made his passing I knew I knew I needed to fly from Sacramento to Detroit I didn't know how I was going to make it happen but I just knew and, uh, and of course, it all unfolded beautifully without seemingly any effort. And again, it just, uh, another part of the gift that has come out of this process that we have created together. And me being able to say, my Max is coming. <laughs> <laughs> and my Ebeth. So what else do you see as an impact or and kind of how is this rippled out for you? Mm. I think it's had a huge impact on my family that they know that they can count on me to keep coming back to that place of declaring who I am, who I'm going to be for myself and for my family. It's, uh, it's had an impact on the people that I work with during the day, with the patients that I see during the day, uh, because it's something I feel like I can bring to other people also. 
as you know, there have been a number of other women in our lives that have that have taken on this practice as well, that have been impacted by what they've seen evolve in our friendship. How about you? Well, I'm, I'm thinking that my husband is probably very grateful to you because there are many times when uh, I can uh, rail uh, about him and what he is or isn't doing and lose track, really lose track of uh, who he is for me and my love for him. And I'm always back on track. It's a way of recentering. I think you said that earlier. It's, it, it's kind of getting back to who I truly am and not a lot of the stuff that I say or tell myself about myself. And it's almost like we kind of, um, we true each other up. So, so my husband clearly um, is impacted. And I think our friendship has had a huge, it makes a huge statement to a lot of people about what, what the possibility of friendship is. And not only women, but I know at least of two men who have taken on the practice. So uh, it's the level of commitment that people see, I think, in us. And, and they're always surprised when we, when we say how long we've been doing it. You've been doing this for 12 years? Really? Um, and it's part and parcel of my life. I can't imagine not having that call. I, yeah. I can't imagine it. Yeah, it's 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 just part of the rhythm of my life and your life now, without question. And I, I think also that even if we might be coming to one another with uh, difficult emotions. We, we're there to really listen and bear witness, as we said, but in the end, to always call each other back to who we truly know each other to be without judgment, um, without uh, competition. It, it's, um, it's just, it's such a gift to, um, to have both of those to be able to go into some of those dark places at times and know that um, that you have a lifeline that's always pulling you back to who you really are. Yeah. You know, we also talked earlier today about the evolution of uh, our willingness to be completely open with other people about this prayer, how at first we uh, we would kind of want it to do it in secret or in private. You know, I'd, I'd have to go into the bedroom and close the door because, you know, I might be a little embarrassed by uh, people listening to us. And, and now to the point where uh, my daughter's heard the prayer so many times, she just recites it for me if I forget any of the words. What's yeah. your experience? Well, I used to go into my study and close the door. I, I, you know, I, I look at it now and I think, why would I keep this from my husband? But, oh, I didn't want anybody else to hear it. And if I happened to be out anywhere when we were saying the, the completion, you know, saying our ending statement of prayer, I would yeah, mumble real softly so that uh, just wanting to keep it away from people. And now I'm in airports or in shopping malls or wherever I may be and it's just it's coming out and and I feel like it's actually a blessing on wherever I am it it's like I'm blessing whoever I'm with especially I've been in the airports a lot lately and being able to say the prayer in the midst of an airport and just let it radiate out onto everybody because it's it's a prayer and a wish that I would say that we both have for the world. Yeah, I, I really think that after you and I are both gone, our, our friends and our family members will continue to talk about, remember those words that mm -hmm. we used to hear Max and Elizabeth say, um, that it will it'll continue to, to resonate, that people will 
remember the words and remember the gift that it was for us and for the people around us. I remember the first time your daughter, Julia, recited the prayer with us. I, I was so touched because it felt like we were passing it on. Yeah. So how long do you think we'll be doing this for? Ever. <laughs> Forever. Um, I, I can see absolutely no reason not to. I, it isn't even a consideration of not to. It, it, is, it is the way I start my day. Yeah, it feels eternal to me, too. And... Uh, <laughs> I can just see it now when I've got dementia at some point. <laughs> and I'm saying, Max, who? <laughs> I'll just read you the words. Right, right. Or Julia will <laughs> right. when we're both demented. <laughs> <laughs> oh. We talked also about really writing a book about this, writing about our experiences and again, I think the the thing that was, uh, you know, starting out with one intention was oh, I'm going to use this to be powerful all the time and creative all the time. In fact, that was really the least of all of this. What was totally unexpected was um, was just the intimacy. And I just feel like I want to share that with the world. Um, I, I think as a physician seeing so many people who um, seem to have, seem to be missing sometimes uh, a person that they can truly share with. I remember one cardiologist once said to me that the most important thing he asked his patients was, who do you have that you can bear your soul to? And that was more predictive of people's overall well-being than anything else. So to be able to share this with other people speak to the power of it um, I think is is really wonderful and it would be a way of I guess giving back the gift that we've been gifted with and you know I was thinking about our husbands and both of us have amazing relationships in our marriages and they are grateful truly that we have this practice and and the fact that we are two women who can share together is just it's just different than sharing with our mates. There is a, a depth and a oneness that comes with it that is uh, incredible. Yeah, it's sometimes it feels like we were two sisters in an ancient village or something. You know, in in villages where people would see each other every day, uh, which is just not very common anymore. But um, but it feels just like that soul connection, um, that, like going to the well together. Yeah. Yeah, like taking our pitchers, which are our day, and going to the well together and filling them up. Yeah, drawing from the well. So what else do you think is the legacy of, you know, I, I think today when, when um, we were reading through some of the, the notes that we'd put together, I think we look sometimes and realize the same things that we perhaps grappled with mm -hmm. 10 or 12 years ago, we're still grappling with today. Okay. So, I, so I think part of the legacy is, is coming to, to know ourselves, it's coming home to ourselves over and over again with a new level of love and acceptance. Because we do have the same, I mean, you can tell my story and I can tell your story and, you know, we know each other's drama. Uh, and we've gotten to the point where we can laugh about it 
our drama doesn't last as long. Our so in terms of a legacy, who we are more fully shows up in the world on a on a more immediate basis. Mm -hmm. We don't get caught in the story and the complaining. Uh, we move to possibility. We move to what is it that can happen out of this. And uh, I don't know, any, anything for you in terms of legacy? Yeah, I, I, I think especially in reading that stuff today, initially going, oh my gosh, <laughs> it's the same stuff that mm -hmm. we talked about 12 years ago. When was it going to be fixed? <laughs> But then quickly coming to just seeing the wholeness in that that's all in, in our humanity. Mm -hmm. You know, each of us has the things that we grapple with and the things that um, push our buttons. Um, and then also the things, the areas in which we shine, in which we're great. And, and I think as we've gotten older and done this process, just really seeing that that's just the richness, all of it. It's just the richness of who we are. And, and I think that ability to, uh, to laugh and to come back to center more quickly uh, is generated in part because we've, we've just developed more compassion for all of that, for the human experience. Um, and, and not, at least we don't get stuck uh, so much in feeling like there's something wrong with it or we need to get rid of the parts of ourselves we don't like to, uh, to just being able to hold it all together with joy and humor, both. Well, especially the humor part. I mean, we haven't actually done this, but we've talked about we should actually number our stories. We could cut it down even more so. Oh, okay, I'm going to be on number 17 today. <laughs> And, uh, you know, and, and then we could move right out of it. Uh, but we have, uh, so I guess another legacy is just the laughter that has bubbled up over and over again at our human frailties. And along with the laughter, the encompassing and the embracing of that. Um, hmm. Yeah, I know. When I turned 50, I felt like for the rest of my life, I wanted to laugh. Just like the first 50 years were about dealing all, with all the day-to-day -day stuff of going through school and having children, raising a family, your career, all that stuff. And, and uh, the second half of my life, I wanted to laugh. You know, forget the mushy cards on my birthday. Just send me something that would really make me smile, make me laugh, um, help me to remember um, how joyful life is in the end, even when there's stuff going on around us that's not so easy. Now, I'm just reflecting on how the, the gift that women can be to each other when they get beyond competition and comparison and how that has really not been there. It's just not been there. Like, as you shine in the world, as you show up in the world, I am thrilled. Uh, and I know it's reciprocal. It's like we continue to, to just glory in each other's beauty, I guess. Yeah, yeah. That's been that's been one of the biggest gifts out of all of this for me is just feeling like when you shine, then I shine, and to feel that with an another human being and not feel um, less than or threatened or anything. It's just such a sense of glory to be able to feel that about another human being. And it, it, uh, it's an anchor for when I don't feel that with other people to remember that it's possible because I created it with you. And one of the opportunities to do this, what we're doing right now, is to just make sure that that's recorded somewhere. Yes. Yes. 
I think we've done pretty well here because we thought we were going to cry through the entire <laughs> thing. Um, I, I think we, uh, we both felt so strongly that we, uh, we wanted to preserve this in some way, to declare it, just in case we never got the book written. We wanted to have some documentation of, of what we've created out of this because of the gift we feel like it's been to ourselves and to the people in our world. And what's possible for, for all women, what, what's really possible for women to, to have relationships that nurture, that honor, that create laughter and love in the world, that it's truly possible. Yeah. I remember you gave me uh, a poem once about a women's group, about uh, women being um, like grandmother's feather bed where you could fall and be comforted. And um, the last line was something like, you can fall here women's hands are strong. And I know I can fall with you. And I know you'll catch me. Or we might lie in the mud together for a while. <laughs> but, but eventually we'll help each other out. And that's great. I love, I love that image. <laughs> I've spoken about it before where... I get to the point where I'm wearing my pretty white dress and I'm looking good <laughs> and I start to slide into the mud pile again when uh, when stuff comes up that's difficult and uh, and I know that I will learn to to finally see the fun and the joy of being in a mud puddle with my friend. Well, we play we make mud pies together at this point. <laughs> Throw them at each other and then get up. Yeah. So, I'd like to um, read the end of our prayer. I would love that. Yeah. So should we? Maybe we should just say that um, it, we we read uh, the beginning part of our prayer uh, and set the intention uh, for the day, and then. Uh, go back and forth and do the images that we talked about to, to create uh, some context for what each of us wants for the day. And then when we've completed that, uh, these are the last lines that we say together every day. I, I welcome, welcome, I welcome, I welcome this, this day, day and, and give thanks for all of the gifts and the, the blessings, blessings that I am that, that I, I have, give and, and that, that I, I receive. I am filled. Oh, oh, I am filled <laughs> with. with <laughs> let's start it over. <laughs> oh, mm -hmm. another great opportunity to <laughs> laugh. <laughs> We've only done this for 12 years. Okay. I welcome, I welcome this, this day, day and, and give thanks for, for all of the gifts and the blessings that I am, that I give, and that I receive. I am filled with grace, joy, and possibility. I celebrate and bless this life and my place in it. Amen. Amen. <laughs>